Hello student, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Ajit Jaswal from Department of Anthropology, Pondicherry Central University, Puducherry. Today we are going to discuss about a module entitled Homo erectus under paper Physical and Biological Anthropology. Dear student, now let us discuss about Homo erectus like who are Homo erectus? We will discuss about their distribution and their important position in human, human, human evolution. Homo erectus, Homo erectus were the, the first fossil of Homo erectus was found from a place called Sava in 1891 by a Dutch anatomist called his name was Eugene Dubius. Its common name assigned uh, is, is Java man. The material found were a skull cap, a complete femur bone that is long bone, three teeth and a small fragment of jaw. So these are the few material that was discovered by dubious that the that we call it as a, as a, as a Java man, small skull that two are in a small pieces. We have a complete seamer that is very important point and only three teeth and the fragment of jaw. This specimen was formally referred to as Pithcanthropus erectus meaning an ape who could walk straight. The femur found showed a prominent linea aspera. The this, this characteristics, the linear presence of this linear aspera itself provide a great important explanation regarding their bipedalous behavior and these features make them closer to hominid or human being. Linear aspera is act as a criteria for erect posture and bipedalism. The skull cap or the piece of skull that was discovered demonstrate the brain volume. The brain volume indicate that it is somewhat advanced, better and the cranial capacity is more than the earlier species but comparatively less than the advanced modern one. And brain volume was as, as that of the present day apes. The dating of this fossil the dating of this Java man or the material that was discovered from Java, Java, Java Valley is, is, is belongs to middle Pleistocene and may be about somewhat 500,000 years. Later on in 1922, a Chinese paleontologist, his name was W. C. Pai, he discovered a skull, mandible. Here he discovered 147 teeth. Earlier in the earlier case, it was only three teeth. Earlier there was a piece of skull, but now they discovered not only a, com a not complete skull, but a good part of skull. They discovered a mandible, lower jaw, and there was more than 100, nearly 147 teeth. And they also found a small fragment of post cranial skeleton. Here, this post cranial skeletons were very small in number but in the earlier case the post cranial skeleton the femur they have found the complete femur and the femur containing as I already told you that it has a linear aspera that indicate the bipedal behavior. WC Pi named it as a Peking man. Its original name was Sananthropus pekinsis meaning ape man from China. Homo erectus, picture of Homo erectus. The picture is of Homo erectus which shows that they are discovered by a Dutch anatomist using dubious and they were called as Java man and later on Peking man. The material discovered from this particular sites were either a skull cap or a complete femur or a pa or a few teeth or jaw fragment. They were called as a ape man who could walk straight. The femur found showed prominent linear, linear aspera, a 
criteria for erect posture and bipedal the skull cap denoted brain volume as that of the present day apes the dating of this fossil might be a middle pleistocene about 500000 year ago later on a similar type of skull was discovered from china called as peking man it is original name was sananthropus pekensis meaning ape man from china distribution of homo erectus several fossil that can be attributed to homo erectus were later found from several sites of europe and africa here are some of the sites mentioned mentioned restricting to the most important and the best preserved specimen like zava lantin heidelberg vertizolosis angri arago from france ternifine from algeria rabat from morocco cobifora from kenya old wizard swarthcran and saldana the important sites that we discovered from africa are east tarkana west tarkana old wizard bauri swarthcrans ternifine sel whereas from israel are obidia from europe it is damnishi atapuruka from zava it is sangiran trinil nagondog from china important sites are yuan mao lantian zaukondian and axian dating dating the fossil to reconstruct the position of homo erectus in hominin evolution it is essential to define the place of this species in time and modern paleoanthropologists have at their disposal a variety of technique that permit them to do so with great precision potassium organ dating for instance can provide the age of a specimen by clocking the rate at which radioactive isotope isotopes of this element have decayed when radiometric method cannot be applied investigator may still ascribe a relative age to a fossil by relating it to the other content of the deposit in which it was found such line of evidence have led to the tentative conclusion that homo erectus flourished over a long interval of pleistocene time the fossil recovered at kobifora are from about 1.7 million year ago and o9 from old y are probably 1.2 million year old the specimen from sangiren and mozokerto in zava may approach the age of the kobifora skeleton and one from the lantian localities in china is roughly contemporary with the o9 the youngest hominins generally accepted as homo erectus are from tignif in algeria and in china and 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 from in java solo in java for the most part fossil older than 1.7 million years are the remains of homo habilis and homo rudolfensis these species are also known from old wise george and cobifera fora in africa the oldest specimen being about 2 to 1.8 million years in age on the other hand there is a group of later specimen that show some feature of homo erectus but are commonly regarded either as archaic representative of homo sapiens or as belong to homo heidelbergensis these include specimen from europe northwest africa eastern and south africa and asia anatomy of homo erectus the cranial capacity of homo erectus average about 1000 cc and 
generally range between 750 and 1250 cc. The size of the brain case of most of the specimen falls within the lower range of variation of the modern Homo sapiens. The cranial bones are thick with thick broadages which are continuous forming a distinct supraorbital torus. There is a pronounced postorbital constriction. The skull is low and relatively flat or platycephalic and in some specimen, especially in Java man, there is a bony ridge. The sagittal keel found along the midline at the top of the brain case. The profile of the cranium as seen from this side clearly shows the angularity of the occipital above this is a horizontal bar of bone, the occipital torus. The greatest width of the skull is towards the bottom. The facial skeleton is comparatively larger and broad as compared to that of modern Homo sapiens. The face which is preserved in only a few specimens is massive, constricted and is its lower part projected forward. The bone forming the wall of the known nose is thinner and the nasal bridge is relatively high and prominent. The teeth of Homo erectus are smaller than the Australopithecus but larger than the Homo habilis. It is in accordance to the characteristics of the genus Homo where teeth get reduced in size and number with, in with time. The dental arcade is diverging with the greatest width occurring between the third molar. The mandible lacks chin but does not have a mandibular torus. Externally the erectus femur resembles that of the sapiens but x-ray reveal that the over the outer wall of the shaft of the erectus femur it twice as thick as that of the sapiens fever, femur. The presence of a prominent linea aspera on the posterior side of the femur strongly suggests erect posture and bipedal locomotion for Homo erectus. The figure shows the different material that was discovered from different sites of Europe. The figure shows the femur which is having a special characteristics that is the exter ex externally the erectus femur look like a erectus femur which resembles that of sapiens. There is a presence of a prominent linea aspera on the posterior side of the femur it strongly suggest the erect posture and bipedal locomotion for Homo erectus and also the part of the skull shows the evolutionary context where they are moving towards the advanced Homo sapiens cultural remains. More than 100,000 artifacts have been recovered from the different sites that were occupied intermittently for almost 250,000 years. According to Wu and Lin in 1983, it is one of the sites with the longest history of habitations by man or his ancestor. The occupation of the sites has been divided into three cultural stages. Early stages, the tools are large, close to pound in weight and made of soft stone such as sandstone. Middle stage, in this the tools become smaller and lighter and those small tools comprise approximately two, two third of the sample. Final stage, tools are still small and the tool material are of better quality. The coarse quads of the earlier period is replaced by finer quad. Sandstone tools have almost disappeared and Flint tools increase in frequency by as much as 30%. Expansion of the brain presumably enabled the Homo erectus 
to develop a more sophisticated toolkit than seen among earlier hominids. The important change in the toolkit was a core worked on both sides called bifaces, known widely as hand axe or cleaver. The biface had a flatter core than the roundish earlier old one pebble tool. And probably even more important, this core tool was obviously a target design that is the main goal of the tool maker. This greater focus and increased control enable the stone keeper to produce straighter edge resulting in a more efficient implement. This Acheulean stone tool became standardized as the basic Homo erectus, all purpose tool for more than a million years. It served to cut, scrap, pound dig and more a most useful tool that has been found in Africa, part of Asia and later in Western Europe. The early tools are crude and shapeless but become more refined over time. Common tools at the sides are chopper and chopping tool but retouched flakes were fashioned into scrappers, points, burins and owls. The first. Homo erectus thus has been described as the first in making and using tool, making and using fire, first cave dwellers, first human gatherers, first to use animal hides for clothing and first to migrate out of Africa. One very interesting and special feature that we have found in the case of Homo erectus that they were known to be the first to start in making and using tools. Means they were even though the earlier one they are called as handyman, they are called as toolman, they are number of other name was given over there. But for the first time we have seen they are not only framing, finishing, giving beautiful shape to the tools but they are using it for specific purpose. The tools were fabricated in such a fashion that it is used for protection, it is used for hunting, it is used for development of other, other features, it is used for digging and in fact it acts as a multi-purpose tool which carried out several work. Similarly, they are also known as the first one who started using fire. Not only using, they were the first to start making the fire it also. It indicates that they have a knowledge of fire and its utility. They are using this fire not only for cooking food, not only for providing warmness, but also for the purpose of protection. They have a, they got the clue that with the help of fire, they will protect themselves, defend themselves against enemy, against climate and also they can use these things for the preparation of food, make the food somewhat much more adoptable way. As we have seen the change in dentition, so this, this food habit and the fire has some relationship. We have also find this, find a very important interesting fact that they were the first who started living in the cave. They were the first cave dwellers. It means that the concept of uh, living in the house, home range or covered area started from this particular period, particular time. Maybe we can conclude that the concept of uh, socialization, concept of village living, concept of group finding, concept of division of labor, all this feature can be highlighted, can be projected, can be interpreted from this, this, this view. And in one important interesting fact also we have seen over there is that they were the first hunter and gatherers. As we have seen that they are not only making tools but also they started using the tools. So they were called as the first hunter and gatherer. They not only hunt the animals or predator but they also gather the food which was either found under the ground or inside the water or over the tree. They also known to be the first to use animal hides for clothing. Means they have started 
thinking about protecting themselves from the hazards of the climate also. They can perceive the, the effect of the coldness, chillness as well as warmness. To protect themselves from these climatic changes, they started using clothing that too made from animal skin, animal hides. Another interesting fact about them is that they were the first to migrate out of Africa. That leads a very interesting chapter opens a new view about their evolution in other part of world also. Dispersal, dispersal of Homo erectus. The dispersal of Homo erectus from Africa was influenced by climate, topography, water boundaries and access to food and other resources. Paleo environmental reconstruction are thus of crucial importance to understand the expansion of Homo erectus to so many parts of the old world. The long temporal span of Homo erectus begin very early in the Pleistocene and extend to fairly late in, the, in that geological epoch. To comprehend the world of Homo erectus, we must understood how environment shift during Pleistocene. The Pleistocene last more than 1.75 million years was a significant period in hominid evolutionary history and encompassed the absence, the appearance and disappearance of Homo erectus. The life of the hunting hunter scavengers was nomadic and the woodland and savanna that covered the southern tire of Asia would have been an excellent environment for Homo erectus. As the population grew, small group bud off and moved on to find their own resource area. This process repeated again and again led Homo erectus out of Africa, African continent to travel east to as far as Java as well as to the west to Europe. The five Homo erectus skull find in Dimensions or Dimensions Georgia explain this phenomenon. At Zaukodian, the remains of Homo erectus were found in cave and fissure deposit. Although this does not prove that these hominids were habitual cave dwellers. The additional evidence of associated remains such as stone, shared animal bones, collection of seed and what could be ancient hearth and charcoal all points to Homo erectus as having spent period of time in the grotoses of Jocodian. On the other hand, the remains of Lantian, Trinil, Sangrian and Mozocurto as well as Tignif, Oldvoy and Cobifera were all found in open site, sometime in stream gravel and clays, sometime in river sandstone and sometime in lake bed. This suggests that Homo erectus also lived in open encampment along with the bank of stream or on the source of lake and also that proximity to water was crucial to survival. There is a little doubt, doubt that mastery of fire was an important factor in colonizing cooler region. Indeed, this discovery may have speed the migration of ancient human into the Chile of an glaciated expansion of prehistoric Europe. Sooner or later, humans started cooking their food, thus reducing the work demanded for their teeth. This in turn may have played an important part in minimizing the evolutionary advantage of big teeth. Since cooked food need for less cutting, tearing and grinding than does raw food. Nevertheless, buried bones are present and these releases may still speak to the ability of Zaukodian inhabitant to roast meat. Other signs of culture of Homo erectus are implement found in the same deposit 
as their bones. Chopping tools and flake made from split pebbles characterize both the Jaucodian and Dimnesi deposit. Both are member of so called chopper chopping tool family of industries at Tignif in northwestern Africa. Homo erectus was found in association with totally different kinds of stone implement. These comprise double-edged hand axe and scrappers that have been characterized as representing what archaeologists call an early Acheulean industry. This is a part of the great Acheulean hand axe industry complex, remnants of which are found widely spread over larger part of Europe and Africa. An Acheulean industry is known also from Old Boy George, as is a local more ancient form of stone chopper manufacture known as Old One industry. There is a no sign that they buried their dead. No complete burial have been found, nor have graves. Grave could or red ochre, a mineral used as a paint by later form of hominids, either on or around any bones. Phylogeny or phylogenetic or evolutionary relationship. A few researchers have generally opposed the view that Homo erectus was the direct ancestor of late, later species, including Homo sapiens. There is still uncertainty as to how and where Homo erectus eventually gave rise to Homo sapiens. Several general hypotheses have been advanced, but there is still no firm consensus regarding models of gradual change as opposed, as opposed to scenarios of rapid evolution, in which change in one region is followed by migration of the new population into other areas. Some paleo paleontologists, including Leakey, considered the more slender or gracile Homo habilis and Homo rodolfensis to be more closely related to Homo sapiens than Homo erectus. Theories of gradual, uh, gradual change as the a traditional view held by some paleontologists is that a species may be transferred, transformed gradually into a succeeding species. Such successive species in the evolutionary sequence are called chrono species. Such a chronological boundary may have to be drawn arbitrarily between the last survivor of Homo erectus and the earliest member of the succeeding species. Homo sapiens. Theories of punctuated change. A gradual transition from Homo erectus, erectus to Homo sapiens is one interpret, interpretation of the fossil record, but the evidence also can be read differently. Many researchers have come to accept what can be termed a punctuated view of human evolution. This view suggests that species such as Homo erectus may have exhibited little or no morphological changes over long period of time, that is evolutionary stasis, that the transition from one species to a descendant form may have occurred relatively rapidly and in a restricted geographic area rather than on a worldwide basis. Whether any Homo species, including our own, evolved gradually or rapidly has not been settled. Okay, student. Now let's try to uh, recap, chat, recap or revise uh, some of the important points related to Homo, homo habilis, like Java man or Peking man. Homo habilis, the first fossil, was found from a place in Java in 1891 by a J Dutch anatomist Eugene Dubius. And they call it or named it or assigned it as a, as a Java man. The cranial capacity of Homo erectus uh, averaged about 1000 cc 
and generally range between 750 and 250 cc. From this cranial capacity, we can say that they are comparatively now moving very close to, to the modern human being or modern homo sapiens, but they are they are carrying several other characteristics which shows them they are still not fully advanced, not fully developed, not fully look like a modern homo sapiens. There is a number of other characteristics which do support them that they are much more evolved in comparison to earlier homo group like presence of supraorbital torus, presence of prominent post orbital constriction. Even though the skull is low and relatively flat what is called as platycephalic, but there is a prominent occipital torus. The dental arcade itself is diverging. The mandal lac chin which is altogether a, again a special characteristic which make them somewhat away from the modern group. But the presence of prominent linea aspera on the posterior side of the long bone of the leg that is femur strongly suggests the erect posture. This erect posture and bipedal, bipedal locomotion is one of the specific characteristics based on that we can say that they are evolving. They are much more evolved than the primitive homo group. They are now moving close to the modern, modern homo group for the homo erectus. First in making and using tool, they are, they are, they are the first one in, in the developing the tools. Not only developing the tools, they are using this tool for specific purposes also for getting the food, for protection from the predator, for making the home range for the hunting purpose and so many. They were also known, known to be the first one who started using fire. Fire is not only for, for, for food production but also for providing warm during the, during the hazardous climatic condition. Also for the protection purpose and also to get the warmness. They were also known to be the first cave dwellers. They started living inside the cave. This indicate that they are now moving towards somewhat socialized life, socialization, community development, group development. They were also known to be the first hunter and gatherer. On one side they used to hunt the food and also they used to gather a food. So they were the first making and using tool, first using fire, first cave dwelling and first hunter and gatherer and also first to use animal hides for clothing means again they are fighting with the climatic change to protect themselves against the heat or cold of the climate. They were also known to be the first homo group to be migrated out of Africa. Thank you.